So, uh, hi, hello everyone. Um, today I'm going to be talking of what we're doing at Jack's uh, class and what we did yesterday, which was uh, Thursday 24th of February. So, um, we have been working already for three weeks in um, the story circle. So, um, I showed in the camera uh, for those ones that they are just listening to me. So, in the story circle, it's um, it's a way of how we can um, organize a project. And so um, how we can um, organize our story. So it has different parts. So the first one is the you. Um, so you is the undisturbed status quo of the protagonist. Then you have a need which is the creation of the story. This leads to defining the main intention. Then you have a goal, elaborate on why accomplishing the goal will be difficult. The search, which is the first attempt to resolve the main tension, the road of trials. This leads to the midpoint, find. This refines the main tension, narrows its scope and makes it more specific. Then we have the number five, find. This is when your protagonist finds what they think they need, but it doesn't work out quite the way they expected. Your protagonist must pay a devastating price for attaining what they sought. Number six is take full front assault on main intentions. This leads to the main tension being resolved, yes or no, for now. Number seven is return, false resolution or exposition sequence. This leads to the twist. We've been set up to expect one thing, then it turns around. And number eight, eight is a change. Ultimate resolution, what happens after this character has gone through these circumstances and made these decisions. So I'm going to read for you an example of how you organize uh, the story uh, with uh, the dark night. So number one, you could be in the dark night. Bruce Wayne dressed, dresses up in a, a special suit, calls himself Batman and brings the pain to Gotham's bad guys. Number two, the need, then it would be Bruce Wayne, is getting a little old for this. He's eyeing retiring Batman, so he can be with the love of his life, Rachel. But who will protect Gotham? Maybe Harvey Dent? Number three, could be to put his plan in motion, Batman must help Harvey Dent by bringing the criminal law to justice. And number four, search could be just when Bruce thinks he can celebrate his retirement, the Joker takes the stage and unleashes a new wave of crime upon Gotham. And the number five, find, this is when the protagonist finds what they were looking for. Bruce finds how to stop the Joker and save Gotham and mask himself, but Harvey does it first. Number six, take. Batman finally takes the Joker in and has him in his clutches, but the Joker springs a trap. It costs Rachel her life and Bruce, Bruce is future, his future. Return, number seven. The protagonist returns by change. For Bruce, the need to retire Batman was lost with Rachel. Now he must protect Gotham. The Joker has turned Harvey, making Batman's final task that much more painful. And number eight, change. The change is put to the test. Batman defeats the Joker, but the matter of Two-Face remains. Batman breaks his one rule when he kills Two-Face. To preserve Harvey's legacy, he takes the blame for Two-Face killing spree. He commits to protect Gotham while being hunted and reviled. In doing so, he changes into the Dark Knight. So this is just an example of how 
you can um, create your own story, how you uh, organize your story. So yeah, the plot goes, the character, like the main character goes through all, all these um, stages. The story goes through all these stages. So for instance, we have um, number one, you need, and number three, go, number eight, change, and number seven, return. They are in the order side of the story circle and search, find, and take are in the cow side. So it's like in the story, we have one side like where it's order and one side where it's cow. So our hero goes through a journey that implies him like he, need, he wants something, he needs, um, there is a problem for our hero to attain or to get what he wants. I mean, he needs to change in order to get that. And that that change brings to an expected situation and then that unfolds him to the resolution of the story. So we have been working on, on that. Um, so yesterday um, we were doing our own stories. So last week, uh, the 17th of Thursday, we had a very nice exercise where we um, we were choosing two elements. So let's say water, oil, paper, water, um, sorry, water, I already said, um, metal, iron. And then we were choosing a test either from a book or from some pieces that Jack um, put for us there. Then we were um, choosing an object so they were very random, like um, a dollar um, shell a cap, as far as I remember. And then we were choosing two images. So what we did that with that, all of us, we took, we chose um, two images, one text, one object, and two um, and two elements as well as air, water, fire. And we created, we gave um, to this story a title. With these elements, we created a story like really quick, uh, just picking up from here and there, and we gave it a title. And then with that, we had a, a task for this week, for this Thursday, which it was getting that story, and working with the story circle, we would develop the story of what we chose. So in my case, um, the story I chose that I picked up from what we did, uh, the title was The Price We Pay. And what the person who did the story wrote was to get the fine things in life, we must sacrifice the things we love kills his daughter. So I was, I was working with that, I only had that. So out of that, I created this story. So for me, the you is the father, uh, he's rich and he has a daughter. The need was um, have fine things in life, luxury items and luxury life. Um, the goal was to get that, like that uh, luxury life um, style and items, he has to kill his daughter. And then the search, um, so the father tries to find an ancient Tibetan relic that can break the spell that is over him for killing his daughter. And then the find was uh, the father finds a monk that can help him get in the ancient Tibetan relic. But that means he should expose his real self. Uh, the return was after losing everything, he must still fight for the life of his daughter. And the change was uh, the father unrolls his real identity as a trained um, monk or fighter, um, samurai, and, and mixed it up a bit there and um, fights the congregation to save his daughter. So my story, my story was about um, this father, Peter Brooks is a rich man who seems to have everything. 
But to continue with his luxury life, the, congreg the congregation of the black crowd has requested him his daughter. So they take his daughter from him. And when he learns that she'll be sacrificed, he does uh, all what he can to stop them from killing his daughter. And in order to do so, he must go to Tibet and get an ancient relic from a Buddhist temple hidden in the wall of death because um, he dares to confront the congregation of the black crowd. He loses everything in Tibet. He'll meet an old monk who will help him to get to take uh, the, to, to, re to reach the Buddhist temple and get the relic. Um, in their way to the temple, they fight with members of the congregation of the Black Crow. Um, his friend, Lao, this monk, will die in one of their fights, in one of their encounters. Peter manages to defeat um, them, and he's heading, heading to the, to the um, headquarters of the congregation, of the black crowd to with a relic to um, save his daughter. When um, he's he's in this fight, the real uh, Peter Brooks reveals. So he remembers being a child, a really poor child in New York, and being trained by a Buddhist monk in the art of Kabbalah. And after finding his real identity, Peter uh, heads down to the inferno to rescue his daughter. So in my story, um, my hero is, he, he's, um, he's, he was meant to, to get to that point of um, being a savior. And so yesterday we were seeing some archetypes of um, June and of the characters and we have different ones. We have the warrior, we have the sage, we have the every, every person, we have the lover. So in my story, um, mine, uh, my hero is the, is the warrior. I, his destiny was to to reach his to become himself and being a savior. So yesterday we were seeing some examples of um, of characters uh, in stories that they can they can they can fit that archetype. So for instance, leaders. So we were seeing we, we said um, Game of Thrones uh, is a very um, easy a clear example of leaders. Now, most of the, of the um, kings of the different kingdoms were leaders. And then we have um, Sage. So Sage is, for instance, Yoda in, in Star Wars. Um, um, magician. So the magician, the difference with the magician and the Sage is like the magician interferes in the story, which it could be Gandalf in Lord of the Rings. Um, so we, in what we were doing yesterday is like we are preparing um, during the classes in general of, of Jack, we are preparing ourselves for the next term and uh, how to develop a story. Um, aside of this, uh, what we did yesterday, and I found really uh, interesting and funny, uh, we were working a bit of Buffon, Buffon, and the idea of the Buffon and how um, you can impersonate Buffon or how you can create a character. And we did, um, we did a very nice exercise, which it was, we were four yesterday, so we were dividing A and Bs. Um, A's would walk and Bs would follow um, A's. So one A for one B and one B for one A. So you would follow that person and you should, um, what we had to do in the exercise, we had to copy the walk of the person. So mimicking the timing, 
mimicking the gestures. And then Jack was asking us, so, okay, once you got that, then a particular um, movement or gesture of this person, pick it up and then you will bring it up. So level it up like five, six, seven, eight. So uh, for instance, uh, the gesture I picked up yesterday was the, the arms uh, swinging, like moving quite, quite a lot. That's what, well, quite a lot. That's what I picked up as something like, um, in contrast, I don't do. So I noticed that. So we were bringing that movement up and up. So while we were working as this person, so it was, it was beautiful to impersonate somebody else's work. Firstly, because I felt the difference of where my center was, like where I was holding my, my work. So uh, the person I was copying had the walk, like hold the walk on the heels and a bit on the hips forward. So it was like core going down. So, and, and very um, decide, like with a big decision walking, like very self um, aware of the walk. And it was um, a side of like working on the, on the buffon or the grotesque that beginning point of the exercise was so beautiful because just changing the way you look, you walk, makes you a different person. I felt completely different just walking the same way that person was walking. Oh, how I felt you approach the world by how you walk, if that makes sense. It's, that's what I felt. And then while doing the exercise and we were exaggerating the um, wherever um, gesture we picked up from, from the person we were copying. Um, so Jack was saying to us like, bring it to seven, bring it to eight, like really unnatural, make it like really, really unnatural. And then now it's like, imagine people are looking at you and you are aware of, how you're walking, like how natural is your movement? Mine was like big arms are like, oops. <laughs> it was like really work out. I was sweating by the end of the exercise. So like, he was like, walk as with this gesture and feel it, feel how natural it is. And like, be aware of people looking at you. So then it comes this idea of like people, the awareness of people uh, looking at you on the street and how, unconsciously we really want to blend whenever we are in the street we don't want to pay attention to it um mention a, a situation he had um one day like he was coming with like the, the bear and um beer and with his clothes and somebody thought that he was a homeless person and i had my own experience of somebody thinking i was a thief um just because I was doing my shopping and I was putting my shopping on my back, which I've done right for a really long time, I guess, since the pandemic, I started to put just simply the shopping on my back and then I pay for it. Um, but for whatever reason, somebody saw me and thought I was stealing. So this person gave me a really bad look, which I didn't understand. I had the same situation as Jack. It's like when somebody looks at you in a way like different, and you know you are not doing anything, so you don't really get it straight away why they're looking at you like that. You're like, what? what's, what's happening? And then when something happens, like, oh yes, you look at me <laughs> because you were thinking either I was a homeless or I was a thief or whatever. So I remember this, this lady in the supermarket looking at me really, really bad. Like, how do you dare to do that? And I was like, what's wrong with you? It's like, oh my goodness, I'm just doing my shopping. It's like, I'm having a drama at home. So it's like, why are you like that? I don't need this. Anyway, um, short after I got um, an employee from Morrison's, that's where I was, uh, asking me to show my back. Everything was fine. But with this, this example, it's like I had the experience of um, 
being considered somebody else who I was not, just because the thought of somebody else who saw me um, on the street. So bringing this back to the walk is the same, like we, we don't want to be the one that everyone is pointing at or staring at on the street. So we really try to blend. So when he was saying to us, like bring it really high and be aware, like people looking at you, it felt really uncomfortable because you are aware of your oddness and you are aware of being strange. And in this case, as he was saying to us, like you are aware that you cannot change the way you walk. And I felt, wow, this is this is awful. That this is really bad. Like you feel really bad um, because you would like to to to. In my case, with my arms, like going really high, like bringing them down and just walking um, without making a lot of fuss. And then we brought that a step uh, further. So then Jack was saying to us, "Now you stink. So you you haven't." um had a shower for days and days and you really stink and you're very aware that you stink um so add that to your walk and in my case i felt awful because my arms was were going up and down like really uh, a lot so it's like i felt you know each time i would bring my arm up like my underarm or my armpits are uh, good just release all this awful smell of um, of somebody who is um, who is dirty, and I felt really, really awful. And I felt for the people that perhaps are seen on the street and may have this uh, unfortunately this um, maybe they didn't have a shower for a long time or something. And sometimes you think like, oh, they don't care, but yesterday it made me realize like no they do care you know it's like it's not it's not that you don't care it's not so it was a very so like interesting interesting social experiment so anyway following with the with the exercise we were then finding each other so there's another person another b that was doing the same with the other a so then he was like okay so now you find this person and because this person is like you so you find in this community, you find it like, oh, I found an equal, I found a friend. So you walk together and it's like you're walking together and you're feeling uh, shy because you know, that, you know, these people are staring at you. So looking at the people feeling shy. And then the last bit of the exercise um, was you stand in front of the people and then you start looking at the people and you want the people to... Uh, like you so you start um doing gestures doing something within your the movement that you are doing um for people to like you and i found that little the last bit of the exercise very i felt very vulnerable because I was aware of my grotesque, like how grotesque I was. And because it's over your power, you cannot change that. And then wanting to be liked despite you think you are odd. Um, I felt it was very sad because I felt very vulnerable because I felt nobody would like me like this. Um, so that was the experience while I was doing the exercise. And then we changed. Um, so they were copying us. And um, so at the second round, Jack was doing the exercise. And then when he was doing the exercise, I saw where he brought it to. And I think there, there, was, there was something I, I could not disconnect from, which it was I didn't. I didn't want to offend the person I, I was copying. I didn't want to offend uh, the person feeling that I picked up one of the gestures that uh, that person had and I was mocking the person. So I could not um, break 
the part of like reality and the exercise. When Jack was doing it, um, he picked up again one of the gestures of the person he was copying, and then I could see how he easily, like how I could see the exercise, like how it's not about offending nobody. It's like nobody takes it that way. It's about like how do you create a character out of a characteristic of somebody else that you see on the street, which it was the scope of the exercise of what he was explaining to us at the end of the exercise. So you you picked up uh, something from somebody uh, you see on the street. We have been told many times, like observe, observe the people in the street, picked up things from the people in the street. They will help you to create characters. So you picked up a uh, characteristic up, then you bring it really high, like you really exaggerate it. And then you can bring that down, 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 down to the level that you are creating a new character. And then he was talking about the physicality and our bodies and how we can unravel our own bodies you know, like to, to make ourselves being into this character. So a really good example of, um, of this could be uh, the Joker or Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, how he um, changed his body. So I think the Joker has slightly like one shoulder down and the other one up and really like a little hump at the back. Um, so uh, what Jack was saying to us yesterday is like, you don't really need to exaggerate, like being like so big. So it's like, it can be something small, but just letting your body to adapt different um, positions, different fears. And so if you picked up from somebody, something that works for your character, then you just can bring it down, make your body adjust into this new position. And then you can, um, bring it to a completely different level and when he was when he was doing um the bit of like you you want to like to the people uh, in front of you so he became so funny it was so so um how to say not politically correct on the way i mean it was like yeah, it was, but you could see it was a character. So he was not mocking the person like he got the gesture from. It was just, he created this character. And despite, it's like, you could feel, I, I could see like, even if it was a character like it stinks and it's ugly and it's grotesque, but you could find the heart within that character. So something like um, the character of the Gollum in, um, the Lord of the Rings, which is like an ugly character and with with odd gestures, grotesque. I'm using grotesque because it's like I think it's the best way to describe that. But then there are like some some moments when you can find the heart of that character and like feeling the sympathy, feeling sympathy towards this character. So that was a really, really nice uh, exercise with it yesterday. I really enjoyed it. And I think a lot, I learned a lot from that. Um, and previous to that, so what we normally do in Jack's house, and with this, I'm gonna finish this video and this podcast. Um, so we are always start with some uh, exercises. So there are exercises about coordination and being present and connection with the other person. So yesterday we started with throwing some balls, small ones. So he was throwing. So we, we should pass the ball to each other. And the first ball, you had to say the name of the person you were throwing the ball to. And you always had to throw to the same person. Then we did some rounds with that. And then we add a second ball, which it was um, cities of the world. So you have to start with one city. So you were saying one ball was for name, one ball was for cities. And then after doing some rounds with two balls, we add a third ball, which was an animal. And so you have three balls going at the same time. You have to say three different things. You have to pass the ball always to the same person. So it was 
<laughs> it was fun. It was fun. It's like at some points it was a very chaotic because you were getting the balls at the same time. It was like, oh. or um, the lack of connection because it just gets too much, uh, but too many things happening at the same time. So you're not really focusing on who are you throwing the ball to. So you kind of just get the ball and throw it out to the air. So you were losing that connection and then the ball was going to the floor and to the ground and that's it. So you lost um, the game. Sorry. So it's kind of um, these exercises are about connection and keeping it cool. Um, letting the, the tension going down so you really focus with the other person. Same with it, this, um, this exercise that we have done in other classes, again, with a ball, like a soft ball, you pass it, not holding it in your hand, so you can not only touch it and pass it, can go to anyone. But again, um, in this exercise, it's, it's really important, the connection you have with the person you're passing the ball to, the strength you use to pass the ball. And again, as he was saying, it's about like bringing down your emotions and being present and focus on the other people around you. Um, because what happens, like he was saying, this, this um, example, like if you are in a play, there are many things happening in a play. So it can be that, you know, it's rushing up like ah, the energy and it's sometimes too much. And it's too much for the public to see that. So you need to bring it down for to settle and like people being able to see this um, in a different way. So that was what we did yesterday. A fantastic class. And I will see you in the next in the next uh, podcast about Jack's classes. Thank you. Bye. Mm-hmm.